What's on? All right. Here we go. <clears throat> the August 10th, 2022 meeting of the West Springfield Conservation Commission is hereby called to order at 533. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the West Springfield Conservation Commission. My name is Kevin Cote, chairperson. I'll be presiding over the meeting tonight. In accordance with MGL Chapter 30A, I must announce anyone intending to tape the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, provide their name and address for the record. The Conservation Commission is videotaping tonight's meeting. It's going to be shown live on cable access television and other computer application and social media platforms. We inform those present that any document that is to be considered or discussed must be made part of the record of the meeting and original or copy must be submitted to the committee before there be any discussion. That would include things such as photos, plans, drawings, uh, presentations, letters, written materials, and the like. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to attend, and I'm going to give each commission member an opportunity to identify themselves for the public and the record, starting with Melissa. Melissa Henson. Judy LaFlesh. And John Goddard. Uh, Mark Noonan, conservation agent, introducing our new recording clerk, Joe Crew, Central Maintenance. Welcome, Joe. And again, I'm Kevin Cote. All right, these are the procedures we'll be following during the meeting tonight. Uh, project reps will make the presentation. Members of the commission, our staff, and I will ask questions of the project proponents. Uh, questions will be then taken from the general public. We're here in attendance. We ask that members of the public raise their hands, wait to be recognized by the chair before speaking, and limit your comments and questions to two to three minutes. Also, make sure to state your name clearly for the record. <clears throat> okay, moving on to the agenda. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the agenda? And if so, is there a motion to accept that is written? Motion to accept the agenda is written. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, all in favor on the voice vote. Public participation, is anyone here to discuss something that is not on the agenda tonight? I don't think so, so let's keep going. Uh, first up, we have an NOI. This is for Lot 3, Hanush Drive, Assessor's Map 031, Block 1, Lot 31. Notice of intent given by Salvini Associates on behalf of Oh, boy. Evgeny Gusev for wetland boundary verification and work to construct lawn, grading, landscaping, associating construction of a new single-family home. I hope I didn't mess up that name too badly. <coughs> Proposed work is located in the buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands. I see we have some special conditions here. Uh, do we have anyone to speak to these? Yes? Good evening. Uh, Jeff Smith for Sylvania Associates. And uh, if Jenny Gusev, I think you did pretty well on your name also. All right, good, thank you. I try. Um, Mark showed me the special conditions. So I'm un I understand it's 26, 27, 28, and 29 are the ones that are specific. I think it was 26, 27, 28, 20. I think okay. the other ones were standard. That we were doing before. These were the only ones that I adjusted, I think. I think that 29 kind of happens automatically. It's in the deed anyways. Yeah. It's something we just, because a lot of times people don't put it in the deed. They don't put clear language that there's an order on file. That's what we're looking for. Uh, the question I did have, so you wanted, it can, could be a decorative monument, 25 foot offset from the wetland line on each of the property boundaries? Yeah, so there's okay. only two in this case, right? right. Okay. Um, so there doesn't need to be anything in between. We could assume it's a straight line across there. And yeah, I mean, you can use there. your judgment. It's up to the commission if they want to add that. But um, I've done it, you know, I put it in there because it's such a small width. Five foot is the width of the lot, like right. Right. 150 at the most. Yeah, so having not, one on either side. Not too much of a problem to yeah. take care of that. Yeah, I mean, you could put one in the middle sides. if you want. But, I mean, then you've got those other permanent boundaries, which are right behind it. So, right. and the reason I, so originally in the order I drafted previously, I had said to move those, but when I talked to DEP in Springfield, those had to do a water quality certification. So we said less, best left, I'll leave those alone. Okay, well. does that answer your question? Good with that? It does. Um, we had a, I had a note here about a site visit. Does the commission want to do a site visit at some no, point? No, I think I left that from what, last, last time. I think okay. the idea was to try to wrap it up. Because you had said you wanted to get started on the non-wetlands, but I'd never heard from them, so. Right. 
commissioners, are there any questions, comments on this one? No? I think we're good with these. If you're done with those, I think we can close it out and move to a vote. Yep. Yeah? I yeah, move so close to the hearing and then, yep. I move to close the hearing for 3300386. Gusev, is that how you say it? Uh, lot 3 Hunish Drive. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Voice vote. All in favor? All right. And then I would be. Uh, this would be um, no. It's an NOI. So this. Oh, okay. So I'd be looking for um, a motion to issue an order of conditions. I um, issue an order of conditions with special conditions for three three zero zero three eight six lot three Hanush Drive, um, as discussed and as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There we go. Voice vote passes. So make sure you sign it. This way. To your right. Oh, right here. All right. We will sign. I have a signing right. party when we I'll wrap get up. Everything out to, to you, so we should be good. You're going to email it, you said? Or yeah, I'll okay. send everything out to you. All right, very um, good. Just get, you know, who's your, I got to send it to you if you can send it to you. Know, so it's going to be important to uh, who you want it sent to. You guys? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Because well, sometimes you want it to a lawyer, sometimes they want it to their applicant. No, so. right to our office. Okay, that's fine. Best. I'll get it to you. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Yep. All right. Let's keep rolling. Uh, next up, we have an enforcement item to discuss. This is um, first uh, mass dot work on Route 20 at Blackbrook, unpermitted work in Riverfront, BLSF, Bank, and Buffer. Do we have someone to speak to this tonight? Yeah, we have Mr. Natario, who's the environmental officer for, I don't know what's your official title, for District 2. Well, we'll let him introduce himself yeah, so for the public and the record. There you go. Good evening. Right. Nice right. to meet you all. Uh, my name is Robert Natario, Mass DOT, District Environmental Engineer. Um, came tonight to discuss what took place on Route 20 within recent weeks. Um, I guess I'll, I don't really have a presentation. It's not really a project that we designed or developed or anything like that. It's just one oh, kind of thing led to another. So however you want to yeah, why don't we start off. Mark, do you want to sort of describe briefly what you saw, what we've heard from MassDOT, and what our plan to move forward is? Yeah, so and then we can get some feedback. you may evolve. You've all been on the email. So anyway, on the 28th of July, I um, was coming in and saw that they were doing work in the road, but then noticed that they were working actually into the uh, feeder brook of Blockbrook, uh, very close to Blockbrook. And so I stopped it and asked to see the um, foreman of the project and then also the DOT project representative. And I had said, well, I don't see any erosion controls in place. I don't see any, and there's no permit. And I basically got ignored. So um, then we Went back and forth, and I got a nice uh, email back from uh, the District 2 Chief, uh, Mrs. Leavenworth, or Miss Leavenworth, and I was going to have you read that, Kevin, but I keep having problems getting the format to read it, but I can read it, I guess, if I can, if you're okay with that. Yeah, we can put it in the record. That's fine. All right, so let me get it up here. Uh, if you want me to, I can read it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is from uh, Patricia oh, Leavenworth it. from DOT. Hi, Mark. I appreciate the open communication on this. While I have, haven't reviewed all the information yet, I do worry that our inspector got caught up in the work and lost sight of how the scope was expanding and impacting the environment. I haven't received his notes yet, so I don't want to judge him prematurely. In any event, I think it is still prudent for me to schedule some time, additional training for both our supervisors and inspection staff, especially since we have been experiencing a high attrition rate and we have a lot of new hires. Hopefully this can be done within the next couple of months. In the meantime, I'll be meeting with my senior staff Tuesday and for an after action review and identify how it could have been handled differently. I also do not accept the contractor's attitude toward this at all and will be addressing this immediately. 
If I have additional actions recommended as a result of the after action review, I will be happy to share them with you. Uh, lastly, if you want to meet or discuss any other suggestions over that as well, again, I appreciate the dialogue in this and optimistic that we can tighten up our operations. Patty. So um, in that, uh, the contractor had kind of said to me that the permitting process is BS and he doesn't use BMPs because they slow them down. And so um, thank God uh, Mr. Notario came out at the end of the day because the way it was left at the end of the day just before a rainstorm was not good. But he managed to cover it with plastic until they got some hay or straw, a straw on it. And um, so at the moment, I assume it's stable. So the question would be for us, how did that after action review go? And what's the plan going forward? Are we, is there permitting? Are there submitting designs to us? Those types of things. All right, thanks. Um, I'm waiting for the final word. My, I've made my suggestions on the site to continue monitoring it uh, at least every other day and before and after rains. Um, we've got, I brought a couple uh, of the inspection forms just to show you. I brought some blank ones of the inspection forms and um, an example of one of the inspections that I carried out on the site. Uh, so it's going to, so at the time being, sure, at, at, at the time being, it's going to be um, monitored very closely before and after rains. Uh, so the blank one and this one filled out. Thank you. And I've asked, you know, I've made suggestions as far as, um, and also questions as far as, is there anything else we could do to the slope to um, stabilize it? Is there any other improvements we can make? And then, of course, I'll have to uh, look at the resource areas, uh, what plans available for that for that stretch of Route 20, and then, of course, uh, stay in contact with uh, Mark as far as uh, any permitting needs going forward. Uh, so I have to, as of yet, to get uh, some usable plans and also uh, what any type of design or improvements would be from from what's existing out there now. Do you anticipate that the work that has been done, it's stable and with adding seating and the other erosion controls, like is this, do we think there's, this site just needs to be monitored or do we think more work needs to happen to get it into proper order for the long term? I'd like to take a closer look. I'd like to go down in the stream and take a look at it from the bottom side before I, you know, the lower, side before I could say for sure. Um, so still evaluating whether or not additional work might be necessary. I, I would think the top layer of disturbed soil right now can be stabilized as is, but is the, is the site ready for the long term? That's my question yet to be answered. Okay. Um, kind of like a two-part answer, I guess, for now. And my only input on that is that the the way the overflow, so it was the existing design, the way the overflow was left was in that same condition, which basically stops midair and doesn't bring it down to the stream. So you have a lot of energy that potentially could be falling on the bank and eroding the slope. So whether there's going to be an, a resolution to that, that would be helpful. Okay. Commissioners, do you have other questions? John? If you don't mind. Uh, Mr. Notario, uh, yes. you just made reference uh, a moment ago to the, the corridor or stretch. Uh, is there, f are there further, because I think this was an outfall repair or servicing. I may have lost a detail or two with the correspondence, uh, but it, is this work that's intended to uh, proceed elsewhere that, and as you mentioned, maybe in jurisdiction subject to review, or is this just a single um, repair point that we're From looking at? From looking into what happened, what took place, and what went wrong that morning, uh, there was a, I believe it was an online comment that was made by the public saying, hey, there's some uh, sidewalk there that's caving in. Um, there was a couple different mistakes made that morning, one of them being the actual location. About 100 feet away or so was the intended sagging concrete uh, sidewalk. I see. So there was this location and there's also one more at least one more location from what I know there's there potentially 
a couple more locations that have to be worked on. So there has to be other uh, similar locations of sidewalk depressions or sinkholes that have to be looked at. Okay. So yes, there are additional. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, yeah. Um, another question for me, do you have a time frame in mind of when you'll be ready to come back and say, okay, it's, we're just gonna monitor it and if we get you know, the seeding growth taking and other things and we're good or nope, we want to do more work in here. I'm looking for a time frame when we could expect, because right now we have an enforcement order open. Uh, work can be done under an enforcement order, but you know, we like to have a game plan of like, how are we gonna put this thing to bed, right? So I'm looking for that from a just time frame perspective. When should we expect to hear back from you and with the you know, results of your final evaluation what, and what happens next? So let me just clarify, we didn't issue the order because we are giving them leeway. So we have the threat of issuing an order. So uh, that's still out there. Fair so, play, but so whether so we do enforcement or whether they come back for a permit, it, it'd be I'm nice looking for that for, time frame. It'd be nice for any of the other work for them to come back and say, hey, if they think it's exempt, at least say this is exempt and we gotta, and these are what we're doing so that we're aware of it and we're using the BMPs. That kind of thing. Yeah, I like to, so I'd like to, to answer your question. Uh, I'd like to come back with um, final like uh, decision, I guess you would say, on this work location has already been done and then also the additional sites. I wouldn't think it'd take more than a week to get back um, at least the initial thoughts back to Mark mm -hmm. and then find out what, what his preference is as far as moving forward on that. So I would say one more week from today. Okay. Uh, if that's okay. And then the additional uh, locations, I'd like to have a look at those. Um, make sure I've got all the right locations as far as from what engineers have seen and then go look at it, go look at them up close and in person myself to see what resource areas are available. Check the mapping, of course. And then I, I would make my suggestions to the engineers as far as what needed to be done as far as permitting and work with Mark on those as well. So it'd kind of be like a, at least a two-tiered process starting within a week. Okay, that answers my question. Anything else on this one? Um, so what was, did they do the training, the remedial training or not? Did we know or is that scheduled sometime in the future or what? I don't think that training that referred to in that email has been done yet, but um, we do have just, it was already taking place before this morning of that, of that work that took place. We've got an environmental um, memorandum that was going through that was sent to everybody in the building that they're supposed to go through these steps. Oh, I've got upcoming work or I've got upcoming questions or upcoming whatever the case may be. And it's a procedure, it was already in place. We just refined it a little bit to make it a little bit more user friendly. Um, so we're going to be using those and going forward. Is the forward. contractor still working on Route 20 or not? I know the con that contractor is assigned with that contract, so they are still. Okay, I uh, didn't know whether I should be looking. Or I'm not. Uh, those types of, if there are like uh, proceedings going on, um, that's above my. Okay. I'm just a little foot on the totem pole there. That's above my pay grade, so I, I'm not familiar with that process, but it could be going on behind the scenes. So I guess the way it's left is that you're reserving the right to issue an enforcement order pending their response, basically. That works for me. Anyone else? All right, well, well next time we get together, we'll have uh, a couple okay. of weeks, so it'll be, we'll yeah. have. I'll go back and look at the corridor, see if there's any other work that's been done. I mean, my big one is the leaving the drain in a condition that we wouldn't leave it in today, you know, that overflow. Right. Clearly in that rainstorm that you and I witnessed, it just blew right through. It so we got no improvement. Right. So. Right, it just shoots right, it's not, it shoot, like, it, like Mark was saying before, it just comes right out and drops, for, yeah. you know. And it, and it went in the drain and right out the back, you know, so it didn't really even, there's no sediment settlement, there's no baffling, there's no, you know, it wasn't in a storm scepter that we'd normally require or something like that. Right. So there's no improvement. It's just replacement in kind. All right, so we'll look forward to hearing from a follow up in about a week or so, and then we'll check in on this next time we meet. Okay. All right. All right, thanks. 
Thank you. Thank All right. We uh, next up we have another enforcement item, which is 31 Massasoit Ave, construction of a retaining wall, landscaping, tree removal, uh, within the resource area of Schoolhouse Brook. Mark, is there an update on this one, or just I saw the list go out? Yeah, so I, the, you remember we had said we'd send the consultants to the attorney, so I haven't, um, um, I sent it to him yesterday, so I realized I wasn't, it was late in getting it to him. So hopefully they'll be at our next meeting. I'll follow up with them. Okay. I assume that's why they're not at this meeting. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think they need to come back with a plan is what we would, uh, but the plan, w failure in the plan was they were trying to use the same landscaper who was, um, we've since learned was the same landscaper that did Ely Ave. I didn't realize that. A repeat time. offender? A repeat offender. <laughs> Mm. You know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt about Riverfront. He wouldn't necessarily know that. But silt fence, he should have known how to install silt fence. And three times I went out there, and three times it wasn't installed correctly. Yeah. There's just a pile of mud at the end of Mass. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, they lucked out in this situation because we checked with DPW <laughs> for those who weren't here, and there's nothing in the drains. And the guy uh, down... Hill didn't want to press it, so he said, I'll just sweep it up, and I don't really care. Fair enough. All right, so we'll we'll hear from them next time around. Um, that leaves other business? Yeah, so the land on uh, Dewey in Old Westfield and Sykes, and I think, although I don't know, is that, yes. that you? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, give us your, your name and just introduce yourself for the record and what, what do we have going on here? Great, I'm John O'Niger. I'm with Regenerative Design Group, so uh, a planning and design firm in Greenfield. So I'm the representative or speaking to the All Farmers organization, the land on Dewey Street. Uh, and so um, I just wanna say one, one thing I just wanna say is I'm on the commission in Leverett uh, and I feel for you all and commend your work. It's, you're, you're at a whole different level where we're, we're mostly just doing uh, septic system replacement and uh, it's a much simpler world that we're in in Leverett. So kudos to you all. Uh, so I just say, I don't know if you're all familiar with All Farmers. It's an immigrant farming organization. Uh, there's some several different immigrant groups uh, that are part of it. There's um, some Bhutanese, folks, uh, Somali folks, some other people that potentially be involved. They're not all English speakers. Uh, they're, they farm uh, both for themselves and um, for their um, community members, sort of small scale commercial uh, as well. And so <clears throat> the land, I think you all got the drawing that we produced to show the work. Um, I have a spare copy if you want, if you want to pass it along. That was a little bit about the organization. Uh, Hannah Spare, the director, is not able to make it tonight, so um, she sent me along and um, sends her apologies for missing you all. And so, so I'll just I'll describe the work. I know we don't have a lot of time, <coughs> and then uh, we can get into a little bit. So it's there's basically some. Um, minor work, which uh, we're going to talk about the ag exemption and our our um, assertion or our feeling that this comes in under the ag exemption. So there's this pre-existing farm areas uh, that we've uh, marked with the dash lines as says estimated historic farm use line. Uh, then there's a um, proposed five foot planted wetland buffer, which is kind of part of the negotiation, another layer to this is that the um, farm is, the, the land is gonna have a conservation restriction on it uh, with Eversource, who's, who's in negotiation um, also with the, the state. 
is involved and the Kestrel Trust who will hold the CR as well. Um, and it's under review. I'm not really completely privy to that, though I did call and talk to uh, David Fowlis and Mary Grover, the uh, Western Region reps, and um, discuss it with them. They, their interest was to know whether the work was um, consistent with the conservation restriction, which is under negotiation. And so, uh, so the folks at Kestrel Trust sent me the info, and we believe that that's all lined up. So that's a, a, just another a layer. Um, another layer to this is so that so what I was going to say is that that hatch line proposed five foot planted wetland buffer is at the request of Kestrel Trust as a way to visually separate the wetland area from the farming area so that um, it was sort of clear what um, what zones were suitable for farm work uh, and the 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 far the the improvements or the the maintenance work that um, is is being proposed to do soon is uh, one is to cut the forest edge back just the trees that are um, hanging over the farm fields over time they've sort of grown out and to just um, push them push that growth back um, the put in a new well to add some irrigation uh, the shed is proposed a 12 by 20, uh, which is 240 square feet. And uh, that's not gonna happen anytime soon, but wants to be on there. And the parking improvement, uh, a small parking area, which would be a gravel pad. Uh, Mark did ask for some information about the volume of material and the contractor is uh, saying it's, it'll be about five yards of material. Uh, for the parking and including at the entrance, uh, which is a quite steep drop down into the field, it'll need to be uh, less of a steep slope. So you can use some of that material to make it less steep for the well drilling rig to get in there. And so that's the last part, the parking, and then just a, a modification to the current entrance uh, that's on there. Um, and then, so, um, with, from my discussion with David Fowlis and Mary Grover at DEP and, and um, kind of research and looking into this, our feeling is that this work falls under the ag exemption as basically work performed for the normal maintenance or improvement of land in agriculture or agricultural use. Uh, so it's, it's all pretty straightforward uh, work that's to um, manage the current situation and some uh, minor improvements like to the parking to have it a little more stabilized, to have the irrigation, to have water available for irrigation. Um, and so I guess I'll just leave it there and see questions that you all have. Judy? I don't believe, um, I don't, no one's gonna live there, so I, d and I don't believe the most of the farmers will be, part of the reason that they're interested in using the land is that they use the bus routes uh, from town. It's pretty accessible. Um, so I don't think that there's any plan right now for having any animals there. Yeah, um, do you know what they're gonna fertilize the crops with? I don't know. I'm not really sure what they what they use. Um, they are organically oriented. I'm not sure that they are organic, so it would be it would be compost for the most part. But there are some amendments that are allowed under organic management, like mineral amendments and such. So, um, okay. Then my last question is to maintain the crops. Is it mostly manual labor, or are they going to have tractors and other farms? There, there farms? will be some tractor work, like there's, there's, but it's mostly contracted. They won't, they don't own a tractor, so when they need a tractor, like I, there's going to be a person helping sowing some cover crop for the fall, um, probably in the next coming weeks. Um, so, so the tractor work will be limited, really limited, like that when there's a pulse of work to be done. Uh, but it's not, a, it's just really not that large. There's, you can see on there that we measured the total 
field area is just over an acre, 1.3 acres of fields. It's it's quite small. There there'll be small plots. It's it's um it's pretty much hand uh, hand managed. So it's just food. It's not um, any any haying to be done there. Any haying? Yeah. No. With equipment. Okay. I mean, I don't believe so. I you know I can't speak to whether they might they might have some crop of grain that they're going to use for mulch that they're growing or they're growing some that they're bringing to some chickens that they have somewhere else like i so i don't want to i can't promise but it's really it's not going to be a hay field it it will be these small almost like community garden uh kind of setup with plots for individual people and families that would be growing on them and you anticipate that the parking lot will be enough space for the number of people that are interested? Yeah, in like it? I said, they're primarily the farmers will be taking buses. The the parking will be for um, the occasional the all farmer staff, or if there's a meeting. But the parking will kind of also the gravel pad will also be a place where they could set up a table and have a meeting or or such as needed if they want to. Um, yeah, there's no need or intention there's the property across across old westfield to the south which um you know has has space there though they don't own it so but it could be a future use if if there was a an expansion or some other need that came up okay thank you mm -hmm. any other questions from the commission no mark did you have anything you wanted to say sure uh, as usual, sorry. Um, so originally I had, in talking with uh, Hannah, had suggested a RDA. I shared with the commission the Farming and Wetland Resource Area Guidebook, mm -hmm. the second chapter. Um, the reason for that was mostly to be clear. I mean, I think this yes. is a great project and I'm yes. happy for it um, and for your organization to do it. There's even been talk, but I know that this will be an issue. There's been talk about us um, giving the piece of land that's next to it on the other side of the brook to the organization. Mm -hmm. It's a tax title piece that we own, mm -hmm. and we have no reason not to. Mm -hmm. um, but that area has overgrown and has not been in agricultural use for a long time. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so having that understanding in an RDA and determination creates that conversation and memorializes that yeah. that working relationship. Yeah. So that's kind of why I was suggesting an yeah. RDA. I understand um, that. You know, the floodplain, the floodplain in that area, there's 12 feet of flood elevation between that and the ground elevation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a big area, five cubic yards, probably not gonna have much of a you know, teaspoon effect on the flood levels. The question would be if you were bringing in a lot right. and not right. wanting to create um, displacement right I mean their intention really is to to be working with that land understanding that there's considerable wetlands there that are a really great resource there's a the brook going through the land and they really their goal is to be working with those and not having an uh, effect showing that agriculture can be you know not a negative effect on resource areas how can how can agriculture actually be working you know, within and supportive of, of the resources, the, the other species that are living there. And so, so yes, and I think that this does a lot of what the RDA would do, uh, just saying, here's the plan, this is, and, and with the goal of having communication uh, channels open and, and just staying in communication about what the organization's aiming to do and how they're operating. The only thing is I'd suggest, or if you could share that, well, it's, it's gonna be a public record, but uh, the restriction, I think, has to get approved either by the city council or us anyway, just as to form. Um, yeah. But, if, you know, it'd be nice if we got a copy of it beforehand. Yeah, I'll check, I'll check on that. I'm not really that involved. It's the Kessel Trust folks, the All Farmers staff, and the um, state. And it's a little bit clogged up. I think there's a backlog oh, for the God, state yes. reviewing. We have two. We have one in yeah. front so, of them right now. So my, I, they talked me. Actually, the state people asked me what was in it because <laughs> they don't really have privy to it. So, so the Kessel Trust folks shared the just enough so we knew that 
the work that is being proposed is consistent with the conservation restriction. Yeah, and so the piece that is in tax title, <laughs> you may need to, and this is what I've had these conversations with Hannah, but it seems to like we're like this. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, why not include it now in the restriction? Yeah. Why, why wait? Yeah. Because then you're going to have to amend it or add another restriction. Yeah. So those are conversations that sure. should happen. Yeah, I'll pass that. Pass that along. And so I her, tried sure. to tease it out with her a couple times, but I think she, she and I don't communicate somehow. Yeah, I'm, and 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 my conversations with her is that there's no intention there. It's really just a small nonprofit organization that's. No, we want to help them. We want to encourage yeah. it. We think it's a good thing. Yeah. I don't think I'd, anybody here would say it's a bad thing. Yeah. But we want to that's be great. clear about it right. so that it's. Have some good communication. Right. Going. Specific to what we need to do here. Right. So. Are is it? Are you suggestion, Mark, that you think that this should be an RDA or or, or a I'm minor saying for project? the future, I think it covers it. Now, I think what he's saying is yes. This this is all exempt activity. I agree with yeah. that. I think for future conversations, though, especially if we involve the other tax title piece, mm -hmm. there's going to be a considerable amount of clearing of a piece of land that has been out right. of ag for. A number of years. Right. So, so that one will definitely, because of it, it should fall in the out other of parcel? ag use. It's a tax title piece on the other side of the brook that we own, the town owns. Oh, okay. And there's yeah. some interest in us. Sure. Future projects. But yeah, them. I've yeah. seen them out there farming this pl plot already. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. this, so this, so this work we're asserting is is under the ag exemption. It's just normal maintenance. There's some and normal improvements. Uh, Specific to raising agriculture. Yeah. Yes, and so I agree that you're on that. I just you know, sometimes the RDA helps everybody understand, Indeed. and and not. I didn't know you were going to do that. Yeah, and so the goal is the intention is not to have surprises. Stay in communication. If there's other questions that come up, you can reach out through me. Uh, you can reach out through Hannah, the director. Uh, you know, and we can arrange a field visit out there if you want. Uh, time or when there's some regular activities make sure if they're doing if they start doing some tours some community tours kind of thing can make sure that you all know and keep you looped in yeah that sounds good so are we did we get a letter saying this is happening and we feel it's exempt or do we need to get that letter i think this is the letter this is the okay this, this is, is it, it. This, this is the letter he's, yeah. he's presenting this presentation it, 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 is, is the is, is the informational that. stuff. He and I have corresponded, so there's a record. But yeah, okay. Just want to make sure that we I know what our next administrative. Yeah, it's is. just and that's the reason we're not trying to be super <laughs> regulatory. We're just asking that you know maybe an RDA at some point in the future may be important to stuff to do. Yeah, and you know, we can we can be in touch. We can be in touch about the other this other property and their interest in that and how that might work. Yeah. All right. Lovely. All right. Well, looks like it's a cool project and uh, glad to see it happening. Very good. All righty. Thank, Thank you very you much. All. Thank you very much. All right. I don't think there's anything else, Mark. We just need no. to do some signatures before oh, we get uh, There's just that um, I have a project uh, where it's an, uh, an order existing. It's outside the 50 foot buffer where we, uh, on 76 Hyde Road. And. Um, it's just a deck, and I just wanted to know if you're okay with me issuing a letter just saying. Outer uh, buffer of BVW, going to yeah. put up a deck. Yeah. I, think I don't think it's fine. a big issue, but I wanted to make sure you're aware of it before I said anything. Okay? All right. There you go. Letter, right, letter. That's it. That's all I got. All right. And signatures. So, yeah, don't forget to sign this before you leave. Otherwise, we're going to say we're going to call this meeting closed at 6.12 p.m. Thanks, everybody, for joining.